Hello Year 8, it's Miss O'Dowd here and I'm going to be explaining to you what your final activity of the summer term is going to look like for English and how we'd all just like to thank you across the year group for your perseverance, your motivation and your enthusiasm for the activities that you've been asked to complete over the last few months of lockdown and I think you've all worked really hard so enjoy the summer when it comes along. I'm going to share my screen now to explain a little bit more about what the week entails. We're going to be looking this week at you becoming a playwright and you script writing or coming up with some theatrical element that lends itself to the, the themes that we've been looking at and exploring over the last few weeks. For today's video, I'm going to be explaining in a, a little bit more detail what makes a script a script and how we might go about creating our own and thinking about some of the other fe features that we must include into this. Now, you will be a playwright and director for this role. So it's really important that you consider these other elements that you're going to have to include as part of your creative project. Lighting is a really big feature of any dramatic performance. You can think about whether you'd like to have a spotlight on a particular character as they are speaking to give them that extra focus. You might want to think about how your opening scene begins. Are you going to have a warm, rosy, tinted colour light? And then is that going to fade into a more ominous and darker colour such as red? as a tragic moment occurs or a dangerous moment um, lurks? Or is it gonna be perhaps starting off quite cold with blue lighting? Or are you gonna have it to be very dim and actually just seeing the shadows of characters in the background? With lighting, there's lots that you can do with it. Lots of colors, lots of different fading techniques, and it's all there to create that atmosphere that the audience is wanting to be part of. So really important with plays that you're thinking about how the characters are going to be performing and how they're going to interact with the audience as well. It's, it's very much an experience going to the theatre, watching a play. So you need to bring that alive even in your writing. You also need to think about setting. Are you going to have the the elements on stage that create that physical setting are you going to have a house for example you're going to have an open room or would you like perhaps to keep it very minimal and just have directions about where you want your characters to be standing where you want them to be facing and actually you want the focus and attention to be on the characters rather than anything else we know that with musicals the setting and the the background production is an artwork in itself. So you may want to go to those sort of sophisticated levels, or you might want to keep it simple. Stage directions are a really important feature, which I'm going to explore in a bit more detail in a moment. But those stage directions do so much. They can give extra information about what the character looks like, thinking about what the costume uh, might be. What, what is the signature prop? That, that character holds? Is it going to be that they always have a hat? Is it going to be that they're always going to carry a briefcase? Is it that they're carrying a key? And therefore that might be important as well. But also not just about what they're looking and doing, but also about their emotions and how they wish to carry themselves. Is it that they're kind of bouncing along the street with happiness and elation? Or is it actually that they're dragging their heels, dragging their feet to show perhaps a moody part of the character or maybe just very upset um, upset mood as well. Tying with the lighting, you can also think about what sounds you want to bring in. Do you want to have an alarm? Do you want to have some gentle background music? Would you like to have the sound of a police siren? And what sort of other elements could you bring in to make your play even more dynamic for your audience? Unlike a book which is separated by chapters, we have in a play it's separated by acts and scene changes as well, scene numbers. So it might be important for you to think about how long you want your scenes to be, 
Do you want it to be that there's two short scenes or one long opening scene? And as I was kind of saying with the stage directions, you want to have that information also about how characters deliver their lines, how actors perform them. Is a character supposed to be shouting a certain line? Are they supposed to be hesitant? Are they supposed to be fearful? Are they mumbling? All of those different aspects bring to life what this character is like for the audience. Another question we need to ask ourselves is what is it going to look like on the page? Playwriting is very different, as I've said before, to books, to poems, and that's because of the form, because of the layout of it. I've got two examples here that I'm going to explore. The first being a text called Death of a Salesman by an American writer called Arthur Miller. And you can see here that Arthur Miller has written a very detailed and dense character description and setting description, which you may want to do for your, for your own piece. We can see here that Arthur Miller is given very particular references to how he wants the, the bedrooms to be positioned. He wants a stairway that curves up from it, curves up to it from the kitchen. He'd like um, a partially transparent setting. A roof of a house is one dimensional. Uh, we have Linda, his wife, is stirred in her bed at the right and she gets out and puts on a robe, listening. Most often jovial, she has developed an iron repression of her, of her exceptions to Willie's behaviour. She more than loves him, she admires him. We can see here that Miller is doing so much in terms of outlining exactly what he wants his staging to look like and even to the, the relationships that are emerging between the characters as well. When the play begins, we have Linda, who can hear her husband from the outside of the bedroom, calls with some trepidation. We have references here to even the pauses that are being taken by Linda, a slight pause, and how all of that delivers um, extra information about these characters. We can see that in terms of the presentation, you have the, the character's name, the colons, the stage directions, and then their lines. This is an adaptation of the famous Noughts and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. And you can see here that this, so this is her opening scene to her play. And the, the playwright here has just got a one line stage direction. Here we focus on time passing with families. Same again, we have Sefi with the colon, and we can see here that this is um, quite a long speech by her. Then we have Callum, and we can see here that very little stage directions have been used. It's entirely up to you how you want to do this. When you come on to GCSE, which is a very long way away, we look at two different playwrights. We look at Shakespeare again, and as you may have noticed with The Tempest, Shakespeare doesn't use very many stage directions at all. There's nothing really to reference what the setting looks like, indeed how the characters are expected to deliver their lines. It's down to the creative license of the director and the actors themselves. Whereas we've seen here with Miller and also when you look at An Inspector Calls by J.B. Priestley, once again, he has very particular intentions that he wants to communicate to his audience and his directors. I'm now going to introduce you to the creative projects that we're launching as an independent research and um, kind of, yeah, creative project for you to get involved in. And these are all linked to the various themes that we've been looking at over the past four weeks. We looked at the other being this outsider in society and how that might link with Caliban. We also looked at the different power dynamics in the play, how some characters are powerful, others are powerless. We looked at the role of the environment and the island. And finally, you've all just finished um, looking at the power of nature and actually how humans have very little control over the forces of nature. Think about first off which one of those really stuck out for you and which really interested you and there are different theatrical elements involved in each of these activities. So activity number one which is around the idea of the other 
is it asking you under the title of a play called The Outsider, very original, to come up with your opening scene of your very own play. If you want and you're struggling for ideas, you can use characters from The Tempest and maybe you want to do characters that we haven't really heard of so much from and it could be maybe a point after the play but if you really want to think outside the box come up with your own characters and you really need to be thinking about well, why is one character an outsider how am i going to represent this through the setting how am i going to represent this through the lighting on stage as well you're going to have a spotlight on the group the, the popular people and therefore leaving the the other in darkness or you're going to have kind of shadows on stage and what's that going to show is the fact that the shadows in the background represent how empty the character is feeling therefore they're not kind of being fully shone at another option could be for you to look and write a dramatic monologue same again you can use characters from the tempest but you might want to create your own character entirely thinking about someone that perhaps has had a lot of power and had that power taken away, like we've seen with Caliban, or maybe somebody that has just always been powerless in their lives and you're giving them a voice for the first time. The activity is to write a dramatic monologue. Now, this is when you have one character who's speaking on stage alone to the audience and, and no one else can hear it on stage. This is just one character. So within that, you want to be thinking about how you can really bring this character to life how can you make it feel that this is a real person actually what is it that we can learn about them in terms of their jealousies in terms of their wants and desires in terms of the things that they love in terms of their how they feel others might see them and what they might be wanting in the future some things that might upset them. So really thinking about all the emotions that this character is thinking and feeling. If you'd like to focus on the environment, the activity for this is to pick a character and an event or scene from your favorite book, play or film, and to design a stage setting, which demonstrates an element of their character at that point in time. So that's gonna be kind of um, through the use of metaphor that you're thinking about what that staging and setting is going to look like. You might need to, you're going to have to label this and think about giving a description as, as to why it's communicating those ideas that you wanted. And finally, if you'd like to look at the power of nature, I'd like you to pick an aspect of nature and then to create a human character based on it. So if you're looking at um, the ideas surrounding the sea, What's your character going to be called that represents the sea? Are they going to be a calm, serene character or are they going to be something that's actually quite aggressive and tumultuous? You also need to think about what the costume of this character might look like and once again begin labelling that as well as the description of this character as well. So hopefully you've got lots of ideas that are beginning to buzz around in your mind if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with your teachers, but really use this um, as an opportunity to just go above and beyond, dazzle your teachers and really leave the Tempest um, on a high as, we, as you kind of go into the summer term. So thank you very much, as I said, for all your hard work and I hope you have enjoyed studying the Tempest. Have a lovely summer.